Hello, I will be covering um, litter fall inputs and in-stream detritus exports from our type N study streams. Let's see how this works. We assessed litter fall and detritus export from eight of our study basins. Four of those basins were in the Olympic block represented in blue, and the other four were in the Willapa one block represented in green. We limited sampling to those basins because of the time required to collect and process samples. Um, we also needed to quantify flow for interpreting the detritus export, and these eight basins were being monitored for flow. We installed litter fall stations relative to the buffer in the basin receiving the current forest practices buffer treatment. The first station was located um, at the downstream end of the basin near the type FN break. The second station within the prescribed buffer, the third station outside of the prescribed buffer, and the fourth station near the uppermost point of perennial flow. Uh, the stations were installed in comparable locations in the other um, sites within that block, or within each respective block. Each station consisted of two litter fall traps, one on the left bank and one on the right bank, and they were situated just outside the bankful channel edge. Um, the, the samples were collected every six weeks and they were pulled per, sta pulled per station. Um, the litter fall traps were deployed continuously before and after harvest so that we have a continuous record of litter fall inputs. Detritus was sampled from the drift in conjunction with macroinvertebrate sampling. Uh, the detritus, um, the drift was sampled at the location of our flow monitoring equipment, which in most cases was located at the downstream end of the basin. We sampled drift every six weeks for over a, for roughly a 24 hour period, although we sometimes had to shorten the deployment period to avoid losing the net during high flow events. This is a picture of one of our high-tech litter fall traps. <laughs> Consisted of a laundry basket secured in an upright position with rebar and then lined with a screen. Every six weeks, our field crews went out, um, pulled the screens from these litter fall traps, placed them into labeled plastic bags, and then placed clean screens into each trap. The drift net consisted of a 250 micron mesh drift net with a drawstring design. We wrapped the net around the lip of the flume and then tightened the drawstring. We further secured the net to the flume with zip ties um, through eye bolts that were installed into the flume. Back in the lab, the litter fall samples were air dried and then sorted into these four components, conifer needles, deciduous tree and shrub leaves, woody material, and miscellaneous. Each component was then dried in a drying oven and, ashed, and weighed and then ashed in a muffle furnace and weighed. We used these dried and ashed weight values to calculate ash-free dry weight. The drift samples were rinsed through a series of nested sieves and the macroinvertebrates were separated from the detritus. Detritus greater than one millimeter was sorted into the same four components as the litter fall samples. The detritus smaller than one millimeter was processed as fine particulate organic matter. Again, we dried each component and weighed it and then ashed each component and weighed them. So litter fall ash free dry weight was standardized to one square meter sampling area the standardized values were summed by treatment year, and then the annual totals were divided by the number of sampling days within that treatment year to give grams of ash-free dry weight per square meter per day. For the reference sites, we designated a treatment period based on when the harvest was scheduled to occur in the other treatments within that block. We calculated detritus export rate by standardizing the ash-free dry weight value um, to a 24-hour sampling day to give grams of ash-free dry weight per day. We also used the stream flow data collected by our flow monitoring equipment to calculate export density in grams of ash-free ash dry weight per cubic meter. Um, because export is flow dependent, 
uh, we calculated a treatment effect between each treatment and its respective reference over the same period of time. We log transformed the data and ran a generalized linear mixed effects analysis of variance to see if there was a difference in litter fall inputs and detritus exports um, relative to treatment and treatment period. If there was a difference, we ran post hoc comparisons to see if there was a difference between the treatments. The mixed effects model detected a change um, in a treatment by period interaction for total litter fall. And so basically this plot and, um, displays the results of the post hoc comparisons. Each comparison um, shows the difference and the direction of change in total litter fall inputs um, in the treatments relative to the reference in the FP and 0% treatment relative to the 100% treatment and in the 0% treatment relative to the FP treatment. This plot shows us that um, oh, each comparison, or the comparisons that have a 95% confidence interval that does not overlap zero indicates that there was a change in inputs um, in the treatments relative to the reference or between the treatments. So this plot is showing us that litter fall, that total litter fall decreased in the 0% treatment relative to the reference and in the 0% treatment relative to the 100% treatment. This is uh, the post hoc comparison results for deciduous litter fall. Again, uh, litter fall decreased in the 0% relative to the reference, in the 0% relative to the 100% treatment, and in the 0% treatment relative to the FP treatment. Here are the post hoc comparisons for conifer litter fall. Uh, we see a decrease in conifer litter fall in the 0% treatment relative to the reference and in the 0% treatment relative to the 100% treatment. This plot depicts the composition of the litter fall inputs. We have treatment and treatment period on the x-axis, percent composition on the y-axis. The components are listed here on the right and include conifer, deciduous, wood, and miscellaneous. Wood comprised the bulk of the litter fall inputs in the pre and post period in the reference and in the treatments. Um, we can also see um, the conifer inputs were high in some of the treatments. This plot shows litter fall inputs over the course of the study in the Olympic block reference site. Collection date is on the x-axis and litter fall input on the y-axis. We can see that litter fall followed a predictable pattern with the majority of inputs in the fall. Deciduous uh, material typically made up the majority of uh, the inputs in the fall, whereas wood and conifer made up the rest of the inputs year round. This is the same, um, the data for the Olympic block 0% treatment site graphed over the course of the study. Again, collection date on the x-axis and litter fall input on the right. Um, this showed a similar pattern to, um, with the uh, majority of inputs in the fall and deciduous inputs dominating the input in the fall. In the area to the left of the line is the pre-period, um, the area to the right is the post-period, and we can see that there's an apparent decrease in litter fall sample, um, in litter fall inputs in the post-harvest period. When we plotted the same data for the other basins, we noted a, sim a similar decrease in inputs in the 0% in the Willapa 1 treatment block, and a slight decrease in the FP treatments and no apparent decrease in the 100% treatments. So this shows the post hoc comparisons for total detritus exported in grams per day. Um, again, the comparisons with 95% confidence intervals that do not overlap zero indicate a change at an alpha level of 0.05. And we can see from this plot that there was no change in total detritus exported in grams per day from any of the treatment sites, and there was no difference between the treatments. We saw the same pattern in total detritus exported in grams per cubic meter of stream flow, and also for each of the individual components, um, including conifer, deciduous, wood, 
miscellaneous and fine particulate organic matter um, for both of the metrics. Um, here we have the composition of the detritus. Uh, treatment and treatment period are on the x-axis, percent composition on the y. Um, the components are listed on the right and include the same four components plus the, oops, plus um, the fine particulate organic matter. Um, and it appears that the composition was quite similar between the reference and the 100% treatments. Um, with wood and fine particulate organic matter making up most of the composition. Um, the FP treatment appeared to have more miscellaneous detritus, and the 0% kind of, aside from this miscellaneous right here, kind of split between wood miscellaneous and fine particulate organic matter. Here is the detritus export in um, grams per day from the 100% treatment and the Olympic block. Um, so we have collection data on the x-axis, detritus export on the y-axis on the left, and total flow volume on the y-axis on the right. And total detritus export was highest in the fall and winter months when the total flow volume sampled was also high. This was the same for all of the eight basins. This is the area, the area on the left is the pre-period, the area on the right is the post-period. And there was no apparent change between pre and post-period. Um, it seemed like the detritus export was responding more to flow. We saw the same pattern for detritus exported in cubic meter um, of stream flow. Okay, conclusions. Um, we did see a decrease in total deciduous in conifer litter fall um, in the 0% treatment sites. Wood appear to comprise most of the litter fall during the pre and post periods in the reference and in the treatments. Um, deciduous litter fall input was highest in the fall, whereas wood and conifer inputs were high at other times of the year. We did not see a change in detritus export rate or density after harvest, um, wood fine particulate organic matter and or miscellaneous detritus comprised most of the detritus depending on treatment. And detritus export was highest in the fall and winter months when total flow volume sampled was also high. And that's all I have.